Hello, I'm Dr. Fabio Schutz. I'm a medical oncologist from Santo Antonio Emilio de Moraes in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And I'm here with my dear friend, Dr. Tony Schwery. He's a medical oncologist from Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, Harvard Medical School in Boston, Massachusetts. And he is the director of the Kidney Cancer Center in uh, the Harvard Medical School as well. And we're going to talk about the latest advances in, in renal cell cancer, metastatic renal cell cancer. And I want to know uh, initially from him, what do you think uh, this new immunotherapies um, mean in the, in the field of kidney cancer, renal cell cancer nowadays? I think this is very promising. Finally, immunotherapy, you know, made it, um, you know, big in renal cell cancer with a good uh, efficacy safety uh, profile. Uh, we have now a drug, nivolumab, which extends survival in patients with uh, metastatic renal cell carcinoma after progression on first-line uh, therapy with a VEGF inhibitor. Uh, Checkmate 25 is a large international study that tested nivolumab versus everolimus, a known standard in uh, uh, second and third-line renal cell cancer, and showed a, a significant overall survival benefit uh, of 25 months versus less than 20 months, 19.5 months in patients uh, who had everolimus. We do have a standard, an immune checkpoint blocker in second line RCC now. <laughs> okay, that's great news. And uh, well, uh, we know uh, at the same time of the publication of the Checkmate 025, there was also a publication of the Meteor trial the Meteor trial was with cabozentinib and you were actually the first author of the publication. And can you make a, 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 a comparison between the two trials, the, the, the patient population included, and, and how are you going to choose the second line now, considering that patient received in the first line um, uh, VGF RTKI, how are you going to choose the second line now with these two drugs and the existing already drugs uh, which uh, are axitinib and everolimus? Yeah, I mean, this is a good question. It's an embarrassment of riches. We did not have a drug for many, many years. And suddenly, and at the same time, we have two uh, positive, um, clinically meaningful, um, you know, uh, drugs, um, uh, cabozentinib and nivolumab, that both uh, did beat Everolimus in terms of their primary uh, endpoint. Uh, back to the Meteor trial, it's a 658 patient that were randomized uh, similarly to the Nivo Lumab study, to receive um, Everolimus as a standard versus cabozantinib, which also is a tyrosine kinase inhibitor that, in addition to the VEGF receptor, target MET and Excel, with these two protein um, known to be uh, upregulated and drive uh, resistant to some extent with VEGF uh, inhibitors. Uh, so. The study showed a PFS advantage of 7.4 versus 3.8 months, and also an advantage in terms of response rate, and the overall survival at this point uh, is not mature. But again, the drug um, is an active drug against uh, Everolimus. It's going to be really at this point a challenging to choose which one should be uh, the second line. I think a lot of it going to be uh, driven uh, by uh, cost, by uh, the doctors being familiar with the drugs uh, by uh, intravenous versus oral and the best, by the side effect profile, nivolumab showed a very acceptable side effect profile and quality of life. We did not see the quality of life data with cabozantinib. Also, uh, we did not see uh, yet the overall survival is uh, immature. If cabozantinib study has an overall survival, that's going to be even harder. Uh, I think it's good thing overall for patients that you have two options. Um, and we have to look uh, perhaps at the patient with good risk, intermediate risk, poor risk, um, because actually the studies are, are very similar in a way. Um, I can tell you that Meteor uh, did not have a limit on prior TKI, allowed brain mats, allowed prior PD-1 uh, inhibitor. But uh, the next year or two going to be very crucial in terms of digging down into Meteor and Checkmate uh, you know, results and um, uh, teasing out who are the patient. We wish that the PD-L1 immunohistochemistry test would be uh, predictive uh, rather than prognostic for nivolumab. That would have made things easier, uh, but uh, it did not. Uh, so uh, it's, it's an open question. Uh, I would love to see perhaps a clinical trial 
uh, comparing these two drugs and uh, I would love to see them combined if possible actually. Okay, um, uh, another question, is there any patient population uh, you would choose one drug, one drug over the other in the second line? For example, patients with good risk or good or intermediate risk and patients with poor risk, um, patients with brain mats, um, uh, did you see responses in, with cabozantinib, did you see responses in brain mats with uh, nivolumab, do you have any data with nivolumab in brain mats? So, in, I mean, in both studies, so for remitting or it allowed brain mat, prior brain metastasis, but these need to be treated. So it's not like brain metastases that are active or untreated. Um, but it's a good question. Interesting enough, when you look at uh, a good versus intermediate versus poor risk, the hazard ratio is quite different. It seems that, let's say, patient on the Meteor trial, uh, patient uh, with good risk did uh, better. If you look at the hazard ratio uh, uh, on the Evolumab um, study, and a bit counterintuitively, patient with poor risk did uh, better than uh, patient with good risk. Is this, uh, you know, reflective of the biology of renal cell cancer that, that progress on VEGF inhibition, or this is just subgroup analysis? and we shouldn't uh, much pay attention to that, um, remain to be seen. The interesting thing also is the rate of uh, primary refractory disease, which was in uh, cabozentin is pretty low at 14%. So perhaps a patient symptomatic growing quick where you need to um, stop the tumor from growing would benefit from uh, cabozentin. Uh, again, this is, uh, this is a great times. This is a great times that finally we have uh, uh, new drugs uh, in renal cell. I expect the life of patients will get better and will get more extended, you know, with uh, the availability of multiple treatment. Because as you can see, if we look at the era pre-target therapy, there is a large meta-analysis that was published, I believe, by the Cochrane, um, you know, um, collaboration uh, that showed <coughs> in the era of um, pre-target therapy, <coughs> the median survival actually was around 13 months, stage 4 renal cell cancer. And uh, now if you look, for example, at uh, the Comparsa study, which was published in 2013, <coughs> first line, uh, sunitinib versus um, pazapanib, the median OS is almost reaching 30 months. And that's probably the effect of all the target therapy available. Now you're going to add nivolumab, you're going to add cabozentinib. So I would imagine five, ten years down the line, if we want to measure this OS in a general metastatic RCC patient average, uh, you know, metastatic RCC patient starting first line treatment, uh, this need to, um, this probably will even push the envelope more. It's good news for patient. A little. It can get a bit little confusing um, for providers which one to use uh, f first, but I think it's a good thing to have. Uh, another question, um, is there any difference between uh, cabozantinib and nivolumab uh, for patients with a good response in the first line VGF RTKI and poor response to the first line VGF uh, RTKI? Uh, are you going to try to use that as a predictive um, uh, besides having a clinical trial, how are you going to manage that? Yeah, th this is good and um, um, we always ask this question before. We always ask the question if someone uh, that doesn't uh, benefit at all from a VEGF TKI first line, should we do an mTOR inhibitor when, when these were the two classes we dealt with or someone that had a great response to a first-line VEGF inhibitor that lasted a year, two years, should do, we do a second line. And actually, what is published is not clear about that. So in my practice, I, I do not uh, use that. But then there will be other things to use, uh, oral versus IV. Does someone have any uh, cardiac morbidity? Uh, you know, does someone have autoimmune disease? Actually, with uh, immune checkpoint blockers, autoimmune diseases were uh, um, excluded. Uh, and uh, these are not so uncommon. Perhaps that's a situation where you want to do cabozentinib. If a patient have a recent cardiac injury, uh, you may want to go to a, an immune checkpoint blocker. Uh, someone who actually also maybe struggled with um, um, TKI-related side effects, including diarrhea, uh, hypertension, and even with the best supportive care, this patient was barely able to receive 
you know, a TKI, maybe you should think twice before using another uh, TKI. Um, although there is nothing absolute, I would say. Okay, and what about patients with non-clear cell renal cell cancer, patients with papillary or chromophobic renal cell cancer? Uh, considering that first line pa patients usually are going to receive a VGF RTKI, sunitinib, azopanib, or even temsorolimus, or uh, not, not everolimus anymore, but uh, how are you going to sequence these patients uh, with non clear cell renal cell cancer in the second line? Is there any preference for nivolumab or capozantinib for these patients? So, this is an area dear to my heart, actually, you know, from the time you were at heart. Um, non-clear cell RC, which anywhere between 10 to 25 uh, percent, depending uh, how you look at it in terms of percentage of renal cell uh, carcinoma. Um, the problem with non-clear cell RCC, not much really done in terms of research, uh, uh, immunological uh, research. We recently reported on a paper that looked at pdl one expression that found that these, these non-clear cell RC papillary homophobe translocation, unclassified, they actually can express PD-L1. Uh, I think the issue is that the currently available therapies, sunitinib, rivarolimus, bazopinib, in non cell RC can work, but the magnitude on average of benefit is lower than clear cell. Uh, but we have actually very little data, if any, about non clear cell RC. I think it's not unreasonable uh, if the drugs get approved. Uh, in uh, renal cell in general to use them. Uh, hopefully we'll have some supportive clinical trials uh, in non-clear cell RCCs, some supportive clinical trials that give you an idea, you know, about the activity uh, of these patients. It will be hard to do a trial, for example, in one subtype of non-clear cell, a trial only in chromophobe. So probably they'll end up being lumped together. And there is always the sarcomatoid, which can be in clear cell, in um, papillary, etc. That seems to be uh, a beast by itself. This is a, 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 a histology or features that really is aggressive, uh, can respond to chemotherapy, can respond to VEGF TKI, but actually rapid uh, uh, progressors. And um, uh, they should be included um, uh, in non-clear cell. Um, uh, trial, especially if there is a 20% uh, or more sarcomatoid component. There isn't really a cutoff. 20% is something I'm personally comfortable with to call it, uh, you know, uh, sarcomatoid driving, uh, driving actually the whole tumor. Although it could be that you need less, you know, uh, to drive the tumor. So I think this is um, uh, reasonable to look at non-clear cell in the future. I think immune checkpoint blockade will be also as part of uh, non-clear cell. Another thing, as you saw, uh, Fabio, from the TCGA um, paper uh, published in the New England Journal of Medicine and others, is that some tumors that are non-clear cell, mostly papillary, uh, but even other, can be driven by MET. So uh, for this tumor with a drug like cabozentinib or uh, volitinib or like a drug like um, that has a MET inhibitor activity, uh, be reasonable uh, to use and should you test uh, a priori. So we're co-working this as another strategy. And can you combine a MET inhibitor and MPD-1 inhibitor? There is data, preclinical data, that actually MET not only drives the growth of cancer cells and renal cell cancer, but increases the expression of PD-L1. So perhaps a dual strategy of combining a MET, a VEGF inhibitor, any PD-1 inhibitor or PD-L1 inhibitor uh, makes sense. Uh, with uh, always being cautious about toxicity, actually. Okay, Dr. Schwery, thank you very much for your valuable opinions. And uh, uh, this, this was Dr. Tony Schwery, and thank you very much for, for staying with us. Thank you, Fabio. Thank you.